Turning tendencies refer to the uncommanded yaw and roll of an aircraft due to the four forces produced when the propeller rotates. If the propeller is rotating clockwise, it will be left turning tendencies, and if it's counterclockwise, it will be right turning tendencies. By understanding the turning tendencies, it will allow you to not just react, but anticipate the rudder use. It will let you avoid overcorrecting, and you can fly coordinated, which will let you improve performance for your airplane. The four forces for turning tendencies are torque reaction, spiral slipstream, p-factor, and gyroscopic precession. These are going to be explained in terms of left turning tendencies using the clockwise propeller rotation. For torque reaction, clockwise rotation causes an equal and opposite force in the form of the left yaw and roll. This occurs in flight, but also on takeoff because it causes more friction on the left wheel which pulls the plane to the left. For spiral slipstream in clockwise rotation, the air flows clockwise around the fuselage to strike the vertical stabilizer on the left side, causing a left yaw. This is strongest at low airspeed and high thrust. For p-factor, during climbs the descending propeller blade has a higher angle of attack than the ascending blade. So this means the descending blade produces more thrust and a yaw to the left. p-factor is strongest at high angle of attack with high power settings. To illustrate this, we'll look at two different pictures of propellers at different angles of attack. So in level flight, we can see that there's a lower angle of attack between the blade and the relative wind, which produces a lower amount of p-factor. However, if you're in a climb or if the airplane is sitting on the ground, the angle of attack is going to be much higher, which will produce more p-factor. So when taking off with a tailwheel airplane, you're going to have a stronger p-factor on the initial takeoff roll compared to tricycle gear airplanes because the descending propeller blade is already at a higher angle of attack. Now I'll show a takeoff demonstration for torque, slipstream and p-factor. So keeping in mind the forces provided by these, if I'm going to add full power and don't add any rudder at all, you can see immediately the airplane starts veering off to the left. And this is due to the forces applied by p-factor, torque and spiral slipstream. This is why you want to avoid slamming full throttle from a standstill position and instead work on using a nice smooth motion with the throttle. Because if you do, you can create a lot of force which you need to counteract, but because you're at such a low speed, you're not going to have much rudder authority to work with and you may not have enough. In gyroscopic precession, force is applied to a spinning propeller exit 90 degrees later. This is most evident on takeoff, so when you raise the tail, a force moves down the airplane to hit the top of the propeller's arc and leaves 90 degrees later. And this causes a left yaw. Now we'll look in game at gyroscopic precession on takeoff. So we'll take off again applying full power and we're using our rudder to counteract the left turning tendencies. However in this case when I raise the tail I'm not going to adjust my rudder input and we can see that the airplane starts swinging to the left. So even though you've counteracted the other turning tendencies correctly Procession won't occur until you actually raise the tail. This is something you need to think about because as you raise the tail, you're going to require additional rudder to counteract the procession. Another aspect to this is how fast you raise the tail. The faster you raise the tail, the stronger the gyroscopic procession is going to be and the more rudder input you're going to need to counteract it to keep the airplane straight. Now we'll finish by looking at how these forces interact together while you're in flight. Alright, so now you've taken off safely, you still have to be thinking about these left turning tendencies. So right now I'm keeping it coordinated by keeping the ball in the center. But if I let go of the rudder, we can see that suddenly the ball is out to the right side. And this means now you're flying uncoordinated. And if you're flying uncoordinated, and that means that there's going to be a lot more drag on the airplane and it's not going to have as good a performance as you want it to. Now let's say I bring it back to being coordinated. So I'm applying right rudder and bring the ball back to the center. And now I'm going to initiate a climb. So as I begin pitching the airplane up, I'm not going to change my rudder pressure, but watch what happens to the ball. So in this climbing scenario, I'm at a higher angle of attack, my airspeed is beginning to slow down, 
and I'm at a high power setting. So this means that the turning tendencies are going to increase in force. And this is evidenced by the fact that I've held the same rudder pressure and the ball has now slipped out to the right. So the takeaway from this is that you want to increase rudder pressure to stay coordinated in situations where you have a high angle of attack, low airspeed, or high power settings. That completes the video on left turning tendencies. If you liked it, use the like button and let me know what you think in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe.